Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about a DCAPM, that is the, uh, the downside CAPM. So, so what we are going to talk about is first we would start with CAPM and we would not talk about the theoretical aspect of the CAPM, but uh, regarding its formula. Uh, then we are going to talk about DCAPM, the downside CAPM, that is uh, another version of CAPM and there are different uh, are different uh, this different models that we can use to uh, for for decapm. So we have Hogan uh, and and Warren. Then we have Harlow and Rao, and then we have Estrada. So this these first two are somewhat similar. Then we are going to talk about uh, the most important thing that is how do we perform this decapm in Stata. Uh, and in later videos we are going to talk about how do we do decapm in R and in Python. So let's start with the, with the equation of CAPM. The equation of CAPM is that we take access returns, uh, access stock returns, and uh, um, on the right side of the equation, we have we have access market return. And this, this beta, this regression coefficient, is, uh, is the measure of systematic risk, right? And uh, we are interested in this, in this beta. In, in terms of econometrics, how would you uh, uh, how would you do calculate this this beta? It would be the covariance of y and x divided by the variance of x. So uh, y in this case is the dependent variable or the right uh, left side of the equation, which is the x stock return, and x uh, x in this case is the the independent variable, uh, the the factor that would affect uh, the, the the excess stock return and that is the uh, the market risk premium right the independent variable another way of writing this this regression coefficients or the betas formula is to uh, to write it like this uh, where we have a y minus y bar so y bar is the mean um, and then we have x minus x bar and we multiply both these series and we take the sum of these series divided by x minus x bar uh, whole square, uh, some of that series, and that would give us uh, this beta. So understanding this equation is important. Uh, the reason is that when we when when we move toward decapm, we would want to know that how the capm's beta is different from uh, you know the decapm's beta is different from uh, from capm. How downside risk is is differently measured as compared to the capm's uh, systematic risk. One, uh, let, let's put this betas, this regression coefficient into the context of CAPM, right? In this case, y is the, uh, the, 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 the ri minus the risk-free rate. Instead of mean, we have the risk-free rate. This, this x would be the market return minus the risk-free return divided by the variance of market return minus the risk-free rate. Uh, now, this is how beta would be measured if we have uh, if, if, you, if you put that into the CAPM's equation uh, context. There is one more thing, if you are aware of that, that is regression through origin or what we can also call regression without an intercept term. When we have a regression without an intercept term, uh, the covariance by, uh, by the variance of x, uh, this, this equation is different. Uh, I mean, the, the, the measurement of regression coefficient, the beta is different uh, when we have regression without an intercept term. And this this understanding would come in handy when we move towards DKM. Uh, what we do in, in regression without intercept, we just take the Y series, multiply that with the X series, take the summation, divide it by the square of the X series. Obviously, uh, the summation, I have forgotten to write that summation over here. Okay. So let's move towards DCAPM. So what CAPM uh, does is it takes both uh, both deviation, that is the positive deviation and the, the negative deviation, the upside and the downside. Uh, because it is taking variance in, in the CAPM formula, right? We have seen variance and variance is uh, how far the values are from its mean, right? Um, or whatever benchmark we use. Uh, when you take variance, uh, it is going to take both upside and downside deviation. And when it, when it comes to risk, these upside and downside are the upside and downside risks. But investors are not only concerned 
I mean, they are not concerned with the upside variation. What they are concerned with are the downside variation. And there is a whole lot, lot of discussion on this aspect uh, in different papers that we have identified and also other papers. But the point is that instead of variance, the semi-variance can be used to measure uh, systematic risk or downside risk, the risk that that investor is more uh, more concerned about. For that, we have certain models. So these two models, the Hogan and Warren and the Bauer and Lindenberg uh, model, these two are similar models. And then we have Harlow and Rao and Estrada. Uh, we are going to look into how their equation is and how it is different from CAPM. So let's start with how CAPM's equation looks like. This is how it looked like. We have discussed that in, in the starting lecture. Now, what the the decapm beta of Hogan and Warren would look like is that they take the minimum of the uh, I mean they just take the, the 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 downside variation and how that how this equation uh, reads is that if Rm minus Rf is negative then it would take uh, zero otherwise it would take the difference between Rm and Rf. The similar goes into the variance. So instead of variance they are taking the semi variance and instead of covariance they are taking the the semi covariance, right? So they they maintain the uh, the risk free benchmark, but instead of taking the the, the 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 variance in the market return, they take it the the minimum. Uh, then we have uh, Harlow and Rao. So uh, they have uh, you know removed the risk free rate, and instead of risk free rate, they take the average of stock return, right? This is the average of stock return and this term is the average of market return. The rest of the equation is similar to Hogan and Warren, except for instead of risk-free rate, they take the, the average of the stock return and the average of the market return. So what it says is that if, if, if stock return, if the market return is less than the average market return, that is, if the market return is negative, uh, then we should include it, otherwise it should be zero. So the positive positive variations are excluded. The same goes with the Hogan. The last one is uh, Estrada. And what Estrada does is also take the minimum uh, with, the, with the stock return. So uh, they also have the average return as with the Harlow, right? And the average market return as was the case with Harlow and Rao. What it says is that if stock return is uh, negative, that is, it is less than uh, its average return, then we would take that. Otherwise, if it is positive, then we should take zero. This is what this, this minimum would mean. Now, last thing before we move towards Stata and, and, uh, and apply this, uh, estimate this DKPM uh, betas, uh, we need to understand that you know, the paper of Strada explicitly mentioned that we need to use a regression without coefficient. And what it says is that the appropriate way to estimate beta using regression analysis is to run a simple linear regression without a constant, right? And that is where our understanding of a regression without the intercept terms come in handy. So let's move to Strata and look into uh, how the code would work. So this is the do file that you can download from the link given in the description of this video. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to load an example data set. Again, this example data set can also be downloaded from the link given in the description. Then I have, uh, I have made different sections. So first we rename the variables. I'm going to go through the code and then we are going to calculate the DKPM using the Hogan and Warren. Then we're going to calculate DKPM using Harlow and Rao. And lastly, we are going to calculate DKPM using Estrada. And lastly, we are going to calculate uh, how to estimate betas or rolling betas uh, using DKPM. So let's start with, uh, let's, let's load the data set. So we have over here certain variables. We have the ticker that represents the, uh, that is the firm identifier. Then we have date, daily date. Then we have stock returns. These are the labels. These are the, the name of the uh, variables. And then we have market return and we have risk-free rate, right? Do remember that this is a hypothetical data and it does not represent uh, a true de depiction of the market, right? 
Okay, so first thing first, uh, when you are going to use this, this do file on your own data set, do remember to convert uh, your variable name into the name that's, uh, that this do file uses, right? So uh, instead of ticker two, for example, if whatever your variable name that, that form identifier is, write it over here and rename it into ticker. Uh, similarly, uh, my data had a variable date one, but the code uses uh, the the column name date. So instead of, uh, you know, uh, going through this code and renaming every variable, the more easy path would be to rename all these variables within the first chunk of code. So, so I have already written them. You may just replace these names with the names that you have in your data set and they would be converted, uh, renamed into the, uh, into the names that are used by this code. So let's rename this. Uh, so now we have renamed these variables. Uh, next, we are going to estimate DKFM using Hogan. So I'm just going to uh, select this code. Remember, each line of code contains uh, comments that would explain why that specific code had been used. Now, what you would see is that you would see an RIRF variable uh, that is calculated using Hogan and Warren, right? Do remember that this RIRF, in case of Hogan, we, we have RF, but in other cases, we do not have RF. But uh, anyways, this uh, this is the, these are the two variables that are calculated using Hogan and, and Warren. Uh, then we are going to estimate using Harlow and Rao. So we have, because in, in Harlow and Rao, we do not have a risk-free rate. Instead of risk-free, we use uh, the, the, the mean of market return or the stock return uh, as the benchmark. Uh, so we, so th these are the names of the variables that had been constructed. Similarly, we are going to construct these variables based on Istarada 2002 and seven. And lastly, we are going to estimate beta. So these are the variables that had been calculated, constructed, but we do not have the beta yet. For beta, what we do is we, we use regression. So we regress uh, the independent variable. So whatever model you are going to use, you are going to take its independent variable and the dependent variable, right? So if I'm going to calculate beta using Istarada, I would take RI uh, ES as my dependent and RM ES as my independent. Do remember to use the no constant option because we are going to execute a regression uh, without intercept. But this is just for understanding sake and in this case, this beta coefficient won't mean much because we have we have around 10 firms, right? We have around 10 firms and what we want is we want to calculate the beta for each of that firm or maybe for each firm for each year. And that is what might be a variable in our in our in our research, right? So for that, uh, the stats by command would come in. Remember, I already have a, a uh, a detailed video on the stats by command or the rolling regression and I would give those link in, in the description below. So if you are interested in the details of these things, then you can check those videos. So what stats by would do is it would calculate beta for each ticker, right? So for each firm, it would calculate a single beta. And let's save that into this, this file, data file called uh, beta each firm. So what I'm going to do is regress RIES, that is the dependent of using Estherada model and RMES, remember to use no constant. So this is going to estimate a single beta for each firm. And this is how it would look like. Remember we have 10 firms and for each firm we have a beta, but this might again not be something that you might be interested in. What you might be interested in to calculate uh, each beta for, uh, you know, one single beta for each firm each year. And for that, we need to generate an year variable. And now we are going to just modify this instead of by ticker only, we have by ticker and year, that means calculate a beta or run this regression or whatever command we have for each ticker each year. So if we execute that, this is how it would look like. We have data from 2013 till to, uh, to 20, 
2020 and we have uh, a single beta for each firm each year or you might be interested in estimating the rolling regression right and uh, for that you would have to use the rolling command or asrec command again i do have a detailed video on rolling regression i would give that link in the uh, description below uh, for that you might use asrec command so first we are going to generate uh, this id variable right and now we are going to do rolling regression using this asrec uh, command uh, and we are going to take 30, 60 days uh, window do remember to use no constant uh, whichever uh, i mean regression type you are going to use uh, but do remember to use no uh, no constant option and this is what we would have we would have these betas these coefficients uh, for our uh, using these the other dkm model so in my video i have just used es for demonstration you can use other uh, other variables that had been constructed over here so i hope that uh, this video was useful do subscribe to this channel and do hit the bell icon